Hello everyone. Welcome to another lecture of the series Energy Resources Economics and Sustainability. My name is Ankur Singhal. I am a research scholar working under the guidance of Professor Pratham Aroda at the Department of Hydro and Renewable Energy. So in the previous classes, we have studied the basics of life cycle assessment. In this class, we will see how in actuality a life cycle assessment modeling is conducted on a software itself. So the software that I've chosen for this class is SEMA Pro. So it's a license based software and we will see how SEMA Pro works. So before we begin, let us brush up our concepts of life cycle assessments that I'll be using in today's class. So as we all know, and we have read in the previous classes, the life cycle assessment consists of four basic steps. So the first step is goal and scope. So goal and scope consist of the objectives of the study. So objective means why are we conducting this life cycle assessment? What is the need to do the life cycle assessment of the particular process or system? Now the next part in goal and scope itself is the system boundary. system boundary. So the system boundary needs to be defined before we conduct a modeling of the life cycle assessment. So system boundary can be cradle to gave, gate, sorry cradle to gate or even cradle to grave. So the basic difference between these two system boundaries is if we conduct a life cycle assessment of cradle to grave. So the grave part consists of the disposal phase as well. Whereas in cradle to gate system boundary, we do not consider the disposal phase. So the next thing that is included in goal and scope is the functional unit of the study. We need to define the functional unit of the study beforehand before we model the life cycle assessment of that system or process. So functional unit, why is it necessary? It is important to understand functional unit acts as a vantage point to compare the results of two or more systems or processes. So let us consider an example. Let's say a factory produces 10 units of a commodity which results in 50 kg CO2 equivalent emissions. Let's take another example where the another factory produces one unit of the same commodity, but it produces 10 kg CO2 equivalent emissions. Now, if we want to compare which of these factories is more environmentally sustainable, then we need a functional unit because at the first glance, we can see that 50 kg CO2 equivalent seems more, but if we define the functional unit, to be one unit of the commodity, one piece of the commodity, then we can see the second one is larger and hence it performs worse in terms of emissions. So this portion covers the goal and scope which I will be using in the software as well. Now the second step of life cycle assessment is LCI which is life cycle inventory. This is the most important step in a life cycle assessment modeling because this consists of collection of data. So whatever processes we are modeling, the inputs to them, the outputs to them, inputs can be both mass, energy, all these data collection is known as life cycle inventory, building the inventory of the model. So if the data is comprehensive, if the data is precise, then only life cycle assessment results will come out to be precise. So that's why this is the most important step of a life cycle assessment modeling. Now the third step is life cycle impact assessment. In this step, we actually get the results, how much emissions will occur, how much human toxicity will occur, how much resource scarcity will occur. So this is the final step in which we get the results. Whereas the fourth phase is also there, the interpretation phase, which goes on simultaneously with all these three steps. So these are the basic steps 
that are involved in a modeling of life cycle assessment. Now, before we do modeling in the software, we need to know the various process blocks of a system. For example, if we are doing a life cycle assessment of a certain system boundary, a system, we need to define various process blocks or items for that. We need to divide that portion into various process blocks and all the inputs to those process blocks need to be defined, all the outputs. The output of one process block might go into the input of another process block and other inputs might also occur. So, this kind of diagram needs to be drawn on paper beforehand before we do the modeling in the software. So, these inputs can be both mass and energy. It can be anything, it can be materials, it can be uh, the energy that we are consuming, it can be electricity, it can be gasoline energy, anything that we are using and then we need to define the system boundary and we will get our process block diagram. So, these unit processes that I have shown in the diagram now, these can be modeled in CMAPRO and then we will combine them to get the complete life cycle of the system. So, now I will be shifting to the software to get ourselves a know-how. So, how a life cycle assessment is conducted in CIMA Pro. So, I will be shifting to the software now. So, this is the icon of CIMA Pro. I will double click it to open. So, I have already registered it with my license. As you can see the username. So, I will click on OK. Now, it is showing opening database, reading data. So, after activation of CIMA Pro, you can see that there are various projects that are shown. So, these are previous projects, the databases that are already present in the software. This one is made by me already. So, what we can do is we can make a new project. Let us name it Neptil, my name Ankur. So, as you can see, a new project has been created in CIMA Pro and it is asking me to select the libraries I wish to use. So, as you can see, there are a variety of libraries that are available. I will click as you can see agri footprint economic allocation so i'll click all of them eco and wind database is also available or i can select one of them as well like eco and wind elcd just to show you i'll select all of them so i can select these databases and i'll click select all and these are the databases that will be available so on the left side of the software you can see description so, it will be reading from the database, the description of the software, the databases. So, this is my project name. So, this is the date on which I have created. I can write whatever I want to, goal of the study for which I am going to conduct LCA and the functional unit, the reference flows, the alternative scenarios as we have discussed in the basics of life cycle assessment modeling. Now, these are the libraries as I have already shown you. Now, coming to the inventory part, which is the most important part and these are the various processes that are available already modeled in CIMA Pro itself. So, as you can see, it is divided into materials, energy, transport, processing, use, waste scenarios and waste treatment. So, these are the things that are already modeled in them. So, in materials, as you can see, electronics, electricity by fuel, construction, fuels, glasses, heat, all those things are present. Energy is also there, cogeneration, electricity by fuel, transportation, various methods of transportation is available. As you can see by air, building equipment, electricity. So, all those things are available to us. Various industrial processes are also available and we can use them. We will come to this processes department later. Now, let us proceed to product stages. So, here we can see assembly life cycle, disposal scenario, disassembly and reuse. We need to model them and I will show you after we get a know-how of the software interface that how we can create an assembly, a complete life cycle, disposal scenarios and all those things. Now coming to the next part that is the system description of the databases that I have selected, the various waste types that are available as you can see, particularing to the metals glass, paper, 
all those kinds of waste types are available so as you can see this is for european union and this is the eco invent one so all those things are available now coming to the parameters we will discuss on that how to do parameters and coming to the impact assessment methods so cml is available for the European ones, the global methods are also available, recipe which is the most widely one used and all other things for impact assessment methods are available as well. Now these are the calculation steps, I can add whatever I can and coming to the interpretation phase, I can uh, write interpretation of my results of my various steps. So this is the interface of the software and these are the links available for the documents for references. Now these are the literature references as you can see the substances, raw materials are available, acids, actinium and all other elements and units what are the units used in this modeling, quantities and some imaging. Now what we will do is we will create a process, the first model that we will create, we will create a process so that we can compare its results to another one. Let us create a process or let us create a new material that we can use. Let us go to energy and electricity by fuel. So, let us see what things are available already in there. So, since we are talking about renewable energy, we can go to photovoltaic. So, these are the processes that are already available. These are already modeled. Now, let us have a look how they look like, how they are modeled in CIMA Pro itself. So, as you can see, this is for global and also though power rating is also given this is for 20 megawatt so let us have a look about that so whenever I double click on the process I can see a various tabs there so this is the input and output tab so output is power block solar tower plant 20 megawatt which is modeled for global so for the inputs I can right click and go to I will double click again. So I just want to show you how a process is modeled. Now you can see this power block is modeled with inputs from Technosphere. So these all are the inputs that are going into the process block of this power block. So as you can see there are various materials available, cast iron, ceramic tile and also the energy part is also inputting it. So these are a lot of inputs in this process as you can see and also I can add emissions to air these are the output parts. So to the particular process block I can add emissions that are going to water, air, soil, final waste flows and even to the technosphere. So as you can see here in this process hazardous waste has been sent back to the technosphere and municipal solid waste BMSW as well and all the units are defined and there is also a description given. So these are all modeled by SEMA Pro databases. Now we will see, we will conduct an example, a very simple example but comprehensive one. So we need to model as you can see on your screens right now that we need to model a bicycle. So as we have discussed earlier, we need to define the process blocks for the production and disposal of a bicycle. So the first step would be to model the process blocks. So as you can see, a bike consists of frames, various parts. So that would be the assembly stage of the bike, then packaging and transportation. And this would be the maintenance processes and all those things would come into the use phase. And then the disposal phase, the incineration, landfill, disassembly and reuse. So the first step of LCA is goal and scope. So what is the goal? The goal is to compare the environmental impacts of bikes using different frames over its entire life cycle. So the system boundary has been defined to be cradle to grave. Now the functional unit chosen for this study is the cycling of 100,000 kilometers over a lifetime of 15 years. So as you can see the functional unit can be service based as well as in this case we are using a functional unit of 100,000 kilometers over a lifetime of the cycle. Now these are the reference flows that we need to draw on pen and paper so that we can model this bike. So the bike consists of one frame, the frame can be of aluminium, titanium or steel, we will model them all three of them and then compare the results as well. 
it consists of two wheels so this is the assembly part of the bike so we will be doing this in sema pro so let us first build the inventory of aluminium frame that is for 1.5 kg of aluminium frame so we what we'll do right now is we'll model one piece of aluminium frame which is of 1.5 kg weight through this inventory that we have built from various so inventory can be from various literature sources or industry sources so i have taken some reference from the sema pro tutorials and this is the inventory that they have built for 1.5 kg of aluminium frame for one bicycle so now let's see how we can model this in sema pro so what i can do is i can create aluminium frame here as well and in the product stages assembly stage as well so let us go into materials and i can select anything let's say metals so we'll go to non ferro metals the market and as you can see on the right side i can create these are the already made ones i can create a new one by clicking on new so the output that we will get from this modeling is an aluminium frame so i'll write that as aluminium frame and instead of kg i can put that as one piece of aluminium frame so as you can see amount one aluminium frame for one bicycle so this is the output that i'll be getting from this modeling so as you can see this is the tab for input output and this is the first modeling that we are doing so it should be very simple now the input that goes into making of one piece of aluminium frame the first part that goes is the aluminium metal itself it's very logical and as you can see the aluminium that we have chosen is primary ingot and eu27 so the sema pro category that for for this type of aluminium has been mentioned as well so let's see so we will go to input technosphere materials because aluminium is not from nature it's getting we are getting it from technosphere so by nature i mean the natural materials that have been being processed so whenever i double click on that input from technosphere i'll get this so i either i can manually choose the particular uh, element that i want to add or i can use the find option as well so what i will do is i'll select this by clicking on find i'll paste it here and let's see what pops up so it is current project and libraries i'll select the current project and libraries if you cannot find it in the current project only alone so as you can see these are the type of different types of materials that i'm getting so it is imported from africa import from asia you can select any one of them so let us select that import one from africa click on select as you can see this material has been added into the inputs from technosphere and since my frame is of 1.5 kg the aluminum required to produce that much amount of frame that much weight of frame is required as 1.579 kg the aluminum required is 1.579 so i'll write that as 1.579 so this is the first material that we have added to produce one piece of aluminum frame now we'll add our second material the second material is powder coat of the aluminum sheet so i'll copy this i've already built this inventory you can do that on your own using literature or industrial sources so by double clicking there i'll go to find or i can do manually as well and let's see what pops up so i'll just select so there it is the powder coat aluminum sheet market for i'll use this one the global one and so you can select based on your region and so as you can see the unit has now changed to meter square so we'll look into our inventory 
So 0.375 meter square of powder coated aluminum sheet is required. So I'll write that down as 0.375. So this is the second material. Similarly, I I will add the impact extrusion of aluminum. by double clicking it again going to the find option pasting it here so impact extrusion of aluminium one stroke as you can see it's a very comprehensive database provided by Sigma Pro two strokes I can select any one of them let's select the one stroke one for the global one So how much kg is required 1.51 kg is required so in the inventory it's three strokes one i've selected one stroke one that doesn't matter right now i'm using it just as an example 1.51 kg of impact extrusion of aluminum the next is weld welding arc of the aluminum so this would be a process rather than a material and the welding is required for 0.75 meters so doing it again double clicking going to find we can also find by pressing ctrl f like we do in word so it's not showing currently so we'll just search welding arc aluminum so as you can see welding arc aluminum global one is available and we will add 0.75 meter of it now the next thing is to add energy energy is also required in the process of manufacturing of aluminium frame so we are using a medium voltage for the aluminium industry and 31.5 units of energy is being used or kilowatt hours i'll go and find again enter my data which is not getting shown right now I'll just type it to aluminium industry and as you can see there's a lot of options available for the medium voltage so I'll select one of them like IA area 1 IA area 2 this, that's a very comprehensive database so I'll select this one so the units that are required are 31.5 units or kilowatt hours now there is some output data as well for the waste treatment for the production of aluminium frame that will go into the output one so far we have done the input uh, materials that were going so aluminium waste treatment global 0 0.079 kg so we'll look for the output as well as you can see if i scroll down the output to waste treatment is also there yes now double clicking it i'll search aluminium so as you can see the global waste treatment of aluminium is being shown which includes the recycling of aluminium as well so I'll select this one and 0 0.079 kg was the data for that. Now after I have entered all of these, I need to click on save. You can see the save icon here. So since I have constructed a piece for aluminium frame, so that's why the warning was showing. And now it's saved when I close it. I saved it in materials non ferro as you can see our new process the first process that we have created in Sima Pro is now available what I can do is I'll right click on this and click on analyze so in analyze I can do the life cycle impact assessment of this one piece of aluminium frame now here in the method section I'll double click let's say i choose the recipe 2016 endpoint method for impact assessment after selecting the method i'll click on calculate 
So this will calculate the impact assessment according to our 2016 endpoint recipe method and show us the results. Once it's done, we'll see, we'll have a look how the results look like for one piece of aluminum. So this is our first modeling in Prima Pro. Let's wait for a bit. Now, as you can see, if I select the characterization tab, I can see the global warming and I also I can see the bifurcation of it. So the maximum impact is coming from aluminium metal that I am using. As you can see, more than 73-74% of the global warming impacts are coming from aluminium primary ingot. So this is our total net result of the impact assessment. I can change the colors as well. I can change the, I can edit it to chart properties. Then I will see the various colors scheme that I can change. Also, I can copy this to Excel as well. So when I click, right click and I will select copy chart to Excel. So it will collect all the data, all the graph and it will copy the chart to Excel as well. So now it is, as you can see, the chart has been copied to Excel. For all the impact categories, global warming, terrestrial ecosystems, freshwater ecosystem and in under the tab you can see the data as well. So now if I click on this show table then rather than graph it will show you the exact values of the impact assessment. So this E means 10 raised to the power. So 2.77 10 raised to the power minus 5 and as you can see the highest impact categories are also shown. When I click on this graph icon I can move back again to the graph. Now clicking on damage assessment. So now it is showing me the endpoint categories. So endpoint are more general, more bigger umbrella categories. As you can see the damage to the ecosystems, the resources damage and the human health damage. Still the highest contributor is the metal aluminum. Now if I click on normalization. So what does normalization mean? We have normalized these result with respect to some other values. So that other value in FEMA Pro is considered to be the emissions created by one human in a year. So I can convert that to single scores as well. So this PT, one PT represents the damage conducted by one person in one year. So this is how we model a particular process, a particular material and then we can look at impact assessment as well. So this is our first model, the aluminium frame. This is model by us, the input outputs all entered by us. Now what we need to do is we will build a titanium frame as well. So and we will compare it with the aluminium frame. So let's go to new on the right side and this we will name as titanium frame. And I'll again the quantity I'll define it to be one piece. So this time the frame is being made from titanium alone. So I'll be requiring the global titanium metal as predicted and 1.43 kgs of titanium is required. So I'll double click then click on find. So as you can see various metals and materials consisting of titanium are being shown. So I'll select this one and 1.43 kgs of it is required for one single frame. The next would be the tap water that is required for this one. So I'll select this. I'll again double click 
click on find so tap water for various missions is shown various regions rather you can select any one of them this is one is the Europe without Switzerland. I'll select this one and the amount required is 0 0.408 kg. So these inventory building sometimes comes from experience, from industrial experience or literature as I've already told you. So powder coat aluminium sheet 0.34 meter square then again using the processes I'll select this one 0.34 meter square. Now welding arc aluminium 0.68 meters of that is required for the titanium frame one. So I'll select the global one. Now there are some output waste flows as well. So the steel and iron waste treatment, recycling. That is of 0 0.07 kg. I'll go to output waste treatment. Point zero seven kg of that. Next waste treatment is of the wastewater in Europe without Switzerland, and that is of point four zero eight liters. So I'll search for the Europe without Switzerland one. As you can see, I have found it 0 0.408 liters. Here the unit is meter cube. I need to change it to liters. As you can see, there are a variety of units available. Now the most important part is after entering all the inputs and outputs, I'll click on save. So this titanium frame one piece has been saved here. So I'll close it and as you can see the aluminium frame is modeled here and the titanium would be somewhere here. Here it is our newly modeled titanium frame. So I'll select this one. I want to compare it with aluminium frame. I'll press on control. And then I'll select this one. I'll right click on it and then I'll click on compare. So I've selected aluminium frame that I've modeled, titanium frame. I'll select the impact category. This time, let's say we'll choose the midpoint one, the recipe 2016 midpoint category, and I'll click on calculate. So this will show us a comparison of the two frames if we use the aluminium frame or the titanium frame environmentally how does it sound. So as you can see aluminium frame performs better than titanium frame in almost all of the categories barring a few like terrestrial acidification the titanium one performs better and in the freshwater ecotoxicity as well. So you can import this graph to excel just by simply by right clicking and copy chart to excel. So this is how we model in CIMA Pro. So I'll close this. I'll provide these inventories so that you can model it in CIMA Pro or other softwares that are available to you. So these are the inventories for brakes, the pair of wheels, the packaging for the 
production after the production of the bicycle you can package it as well the bike assembly now coming to the product stages so in assembly you can create a new one and i will import the bike assembly if i have created all the inventory that i have provided you can try it on your own so you need to save it and in the life cycle part i'll show you how the life cycle of the bike looks like so once the bike assembly has been modeled completely then i'll import it as input and these are the use phase of the bike and i also need to add a bike disposal scenario so for my case the bike disposal scenario looks some looks something like this so as you can see 65% of it goes to disassembly and 30% of it goes to bike reuse and 5% of it goes to msw so how does it look like in sema pro i'll show you the life cycle let's create a new one click on others let's create a new one and the waste disposal scenarios are available to you as you can see household incineration landfill municipal waste all those things are available let's see how the disposal scenario modeling looks like i won't be modeling each one of them because it's a lot of inventory and i've showed you the two ones and you can create your assemblies on your own so now so waste scenarios i can provide the percentage so these percentage that i've showed you for bike disposal so as you can see disassembly contributes to 65% bike reuse 30 msw 5 so i can add it like this so municipal solid landfill i can add any one of them till 5% disassemblies i need to create new ones so this is how a life cycle from cradle to grave is modeled in sema pro now there is another powerful tool in sema pro that is known as parameterization let us create an assembly first to show how parameters work in sema pro so let's say i want to transport some bricks or silo or rather i'll go to bricks one market one let's say i want to transport 1000 kg of bricks and there are three locations or two locations available for me and those are differentiated by their distances from the production of clay brick so what i'll do is i'll add a transport process first of all let's say i'm going by road to market let's say i'm using a transport freight lorry so it is going the unit is in terms of tons of kilometer ton kilometer so transporting one ton of mass to one kilometer that's the unit ton kilometer so let's say the first amount is 500 ton kilometer i need to transport it now i want to check for the other three locations how the distance if varied would affect the environmental emissions so i need to model it again but no we can add a parameter i can as you can see there are two tabs input and output and then in parameters i'll add one parameter of my choice i'll name it distance and i'll assign the initial value that is the 500 yeah and now in place of amount i'll simply write the name of the parameter that i've added so it's distance as you can see it's already showing distance equal to 500 kilometer i've just pressed enter so this is the parameter that i've added i'll click on save i need to enter a name first so i'll use it as parameter example 
So parameters come handy when we don't want to model things again and again. I just want to ch ch change this distance. So I saved it. This is the parameter example. I'll right click and I'll click on analyze. Now, as you can see, there are various tabs available here as well. So I'll go to parameter sets. I'll click on add parameter. Then you, this window will pop up. I'll click on scan tree. So in the scan tree, it will show all the parameters associated with my assembly. So as you can see, this distance parameter was added by us. I'll select this one. I'll add a set, the set one. I'll name it as normal. So value is 500, 510 kilometers of distance. I'll add another set and we'll name it low distance or low. So let's say we want to move 200 kilometers, 210 kilometers. So I'll I, by clicking on add here, I've added a set and value. I can just double click here and 200 will be added. Now by clicking on add, I'll add a set 3 which says high distance. So let's say it's 1000 ton kilometers. I'll click on set 3, double click on set 3 and I'll add the value 1000. So I don't need to model for different distances again and again. I will just add the parameter and add these values and click on calculate. So it will show me the environmental impact comparison of these three distances that I've added. So as you can see, I haven't selected the method yet. So on the inventory side, the normal the low and the high portions you can see 2.85, 2.71, 2.1. I'll do this again to show the impact assessment. I'll select the method first. Let's say midpoint. And I'll go to parameter sets. Then again, add parameter. Already scanned distance. I already showed you this. Set 1, set 2. You can name it on your own. Our set 3 was the highest one. I'll set the value at 1000 ton kilometers. I'll click on calculate. Let's see what the impact assessment shows us. So, as expected, the set 3 was the highest distance. It shows the, in the red color, it shows the highest impacts in all of the categories. The middle one was the lowest one, the 200 ton kilometer one. And the first one was 500, the base case. And as expected, the impacts have been shown. You can click on table to get the exact values as well. So set 3 has the highest global warming, 464. So you don't need to model again for just, you know, changing the distance. You can simply add the parameter distance and add the parameter set values and we can simply get to it. So this is the modeling that we have done today in SEMA Pro. I hope you find it useful. So in today's lecture, we saw how to do LC modeling in SEMA Pro software. There are a variety of softwares available for doing LC modeling as well. So on your screens, you can see there are a variety of softwares like Gabi, Umberto and Earthsmart. These all three are license based and OpenLC and Brightway 2 are the open source LC softwares. The interfaces of these softwares might be different from SEMA Pro, but the basics of lifecycle assessment would remain the same. So that's it from my side from for this lecture. Thank you.